All right, hey guys, Vance Pastry. Um, it's Sunday for me, if any of you are still keeping track of the days. Um, it's getting pretty hard. <laughs> um, I wanted to do a video just about uh, the differences between mousse, a mousseline, and a Bavarian. So uh, we've done mousse already. Uh, we did chocolate mousse. We did not get a chance to get to fruit mousse. Uh, it's a little bit different, um, but I we did describe it. Um, so um, important thing to remember is uh, with chocolate mousse, it's the only one where you can allow it to cool and then still rework it in some way. The only reason why that's possible is that it's the chocolate that's actually cooling and binding the uh, product together rather than gelatin, which is uh, binding all the rest of these together. So uh, once gelatin cools and it sets, um, just kind of think about jello uh, that you've probably made. Uh, if you take jello, uh, it's in a nice little square cube, um, you smash it up with a fork, and then you put it back in the refrigerator, um, it doesn't just magically gel itself back together. It stays broken like that. Um, that's basically kind of what's gonna happen on the inside of all of these things. Also, um, the product is completely sacrificed once you have tried to uh, either reshape it or put it in a pastry bag again or any of those things. So um, prep and mise en place uh, before you make these things are of utmost importance. So if you're going to use it as a filling for a cake, for a mousse cake, for instance, um, you would have to bake your cakes ahead of time, get your ring molds ready. Um, if you're going to make it into a parfait or uh, some sort of a dessert in a vessel, of a con like a container or like a chocolate shell or something like that, you're gonna have to have those things made ready, waiting ahead, ahead of time. So that as soon as this product is made, your mousseline, your mousse, your Bavarian, you can just pour it right directly in there. It's gonna set with the gelatin and then you can either layer on top of it um, or you know if that's it, then you just serve it as is. So um, you have probably heard these terms um, in some way, shape, or form um, in grocery stores or uh, through you know different uh, product videos in YouTube. Um, I just kind of wanted to make some clarifications that sometimes um, what is presented as a mousseline or as a mousse or as a Bavarian. Um, is no similar, no different than all the other baked goods, right? Um, they can be portrayed as something that they're not, okay? Um, you have probably had some sort of a wedding cake called a Bavarian filling inside of a wedding cake. Um, that Bavarian filling is most likely a, a form of a pastry cream, not actually a Bavarian cream. Um, mousseline, oftentimes a diplomat cream, uh, which we know as um, whipped cream mixed with a uh, pastry cream that makes diplomat cream. Um, you may have heard of uh, mousseline being uh, named that. So um, names get kind of uh, moved around, they lose their meaning through time. Um, so basically what I'm presenting here is the um, sort of the official terms and um, what we know them to be uh, in the pastry world, not necessarily what things might be marketed in like an HEB or something like that. So um, let's start with mousseline. Mousseline, you start with a fruit mousse. I'm sorry, a fruit puree. Um, this puree needs to be warmed up just a little bit because you're going to add gelatin into it. So we heat it. Uh, it's about 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you're going to put in Bloom's gelatin. Okay, so that's your first step. Your next step is to uh, basically take the next set of ingredients to make an Italian meringue. So you're going to take sugar, water, egg whites, you're going to make an Italian meringue. Your last step is to make a whipped cream. Okay. Usually the whipped cream either has little to no sugar in it because um, it 
gets the sweetness from the Italian meringue and from the fruit. So um, don't be scared if the, the whipped cream is, is just heavy whipped cream with no sugar added to it. It's generally going to be okay. Um, so basically you're going to have three different bowls. You're going to have your fruit puree bowl, which has gelatin added to it. You're going to have your Italian meringue in a bowl and you're going to have your whipped cream in a bowl. Okay. Um, so your first step is you're going to take that uh, fruit puree and you're going to uh, gently fold it into the Italian meringue. Uh, anytime that we add something into a meringue or we add a meringue into a batter, we always do it in thirds, remember? Um, basically that uh, decreases the amount of volume that we end up losing. Uh, that first uh, initial amount that we add in is kind of the sacrifice. It sacrifices some volume. Um, and then by the end, you know, we end up with a flakier pro um, sorry, a fluffier product than uh, what we would have had if we had just dumped the whole thing in at one time. Okay. Um, so now you've got Italian meringue with fruit puree mixed in. You're going to take uh, your whipped cream. Um, whipped cream will melt at high temperatures, right? So it's very important that during uh, the Italian meringue step that you actually cooled your Italian meringue down to match about this temperature, about 110, 115. Uh, no hotter than that, it's okay for it to be a little bit colder because you've already mixed in the gelatin on, on this first step, okay? Uh, just the colder that it is, know the faster that you have to uh, work to blend it together, okay? Um, your whipped cream, is your last step. Uh, it can kind of generally be added in all at one time. Um, and then you're ready to go. So this can uh, be served alongside, you know, a sponge cake or um, in a parfait uh, with some sort of a fruit coulis. Uh, it makes a really delicious, very, very light dessert. Um, if you look at uh, how I listed them, mousseline is at the top because it's considered the lightest in uh, texture. Um, and texture kind of, you can also say mouthfeel. Um, so it's uh, a very light, refreshing, nice summertime type dessert. Uh, mousse. Mousse generally has some sort of uh, yolk. Uh, sometimes uh, that is a, well, I'm, I'm gonna say usually, that's a pate bomb. That pate bomb, um, means, if you'll remember, that you have a yolk that gets a, a hot sugar syrup uh, streamed into it to make a big fluffy um, yellow yolky egg mixture thing, right? So it's exactly the same as an Italian meringue except with yolks. Uh, think of it that way. Um, sometimes you have both eggs uh, serving as aerators in a, in a mousse. So we're going to say uh, whites sometimes. Um, you've got either a fruit, a fruit puree, which is, you've done the same thing here. So if it's a fruit mousse, then you would do this exact same step here where you have your fruit puree and then you add in your bloomed gelatin. Um, and then uh, that serves as sort of the binder for uh, your pate bomb and then your uh, whipped cream. Uh, at the end, okay? Uh, now, if it's a chocolate mousse, uh, like we have made before in class, there isn't a gelatin in it, it's the chocolate that's binding it together. Uh, last one. So Bavarian is a little bit different, uh, but people will confuse it with a mousse because of the texture and the mouthfeel that this product has. Bavarian is actually starts with a creme anglaise. Okay, so you're going to make a creme anglaise. You have to cool it. Um, before you add in the gelatin. Um, if you don't cool it, then essentially uh, you're going to uh, break your Bavarian because whenever you add in the whipped cream, uh, all of that whipped cream is going to melt out, okay? 
Uh, so let me uh, check the, the page number real quickly. Okay, so there's a Bavarian on page 526. All right, so essentially what you're doing is you're taking your uh, creme anglaise, you'll cook it the way that you normally do. You can infuse any type of flavor that you want into it. You can use liqueurs, you can use um, zest of citrus fruit, you can use uh, extracts and uh, essences and all kinds of things uh, to put flavor into the creme anglaise. Um, and then you're going to essentially uh, melt in your gelatin uh, don't cool it completely, but uh, cool it down to where whenever you whip it, melt, I'm uh, sorry, fold in your whipped cream, um, you're not going to break that whipped cream, okay? So for this one, it is a little bit richer. It's not as fluffy because it doesn't have the, the egg aerators that the mousseline and the mousse does. Uh, it just has essentially the whipped cream to, uh, to help it. Um, the creme anglaise is really what gives it its richness. So it's almost kind of like a non-frozen, fluffier version of ice cream if it's vanilla. So if you can kind of imagine that in your mind. Um, if you have the ingredients, I would uh, recommend that you try um, to make it while we're out. Um, I know it's difficult uh, to even get to the source or, you know, to get uh, cream and these things. So um, I'm not requiring that, of course, but um, if you have a little bit of free time uh, to do some baking, this might be a good one uh, to try out. Um, the last one we mentioned uh, before, but I just wanted to throw it in here uh, just because it's kind of of the same family. It's called a fool. Uh, so this one was just the whipped cream. Plus the uh, coolie. And then sometimes that coolie has some gelatin in it. Okay. So that would just kind of be made uh, in the same fashion. You can also leave out the gelatin if you're going to serve it very quickly. So, you know, say this is a... Um, a dessert where you're just basically making it on the fly because uh, you have a, a sudden pop-up for a dessert uh, where somebody wants something like this and you don't have the time to do these types of things. Um, this is just kind of a good substitute in that manner. Um, but it will not uh, hold up long uh, with the extra weight and liquids of the coolie whipped into the whipped cream without a gelatin stabilizer. Okay, so just kind of keep that one in mind. Um, so, uh, one additional note, I'm uh, pretty encouraged by all of your participation in um, all of your Blackboard classes. Um, so it looks like somebody's, you know, we're all kind of getting into the, the groove of what this is going to look like. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as um, normal as what you guys are used to. You know, I'm trying to still write on a whiteboard, not trying to put everything on a PowerPoint um, so that you guys can still kind of get... Um, information in the way that you are used to getting it. Um, my Whataburger cup is actually off camera. You just can't see it. Um, only difference is that we just can't see each other right now. So um, I do have a couple of assignments from you guys. So the week that I was uh, out, I think you guys uh, turned in some stuff. Is that right? Um, so I have I have assignments, so I'm not sure if it's from this class or the other. Um, I, I have a, a big pile. I just cleared off my desk. So whenever they told me that I could go in uh, to campus, I just grabbed everything that I could, threw it in a bag, and I said, you know, if, if students ask for this, I'll just mail it out to them. So uh, basically, if I have something, maybe you did homework for a class um, of mine, I might have it. So I hope that I do. Um, 
anyways uh, I brought it home so that I could put in grades and things like that and basically so that I could uh, later distribute it to you if I could so um, if you're looking for something to help you study uh, please send me an individual email um, obviously that you know would, it would most apply to handwritten homework um, if you typed it out then obviously you would have your own uh, copy of that but if you have some handwritten work that you've been dying to get back I may be able to get it back to you if you send me an email I can mail it to you so um, projects and assignments will be posted uh, every Monday of every week so um, we're trying to give y'all at least a week uh, to get that work in so um, in some cases we'll you know move move deadlines around so it just uh, not everything is due, you know, within two days of, of each other. So um, we are very cognizant of uh, the stress that this type of workload has uh, put on all of you. Um, it's not the same as what we've always done. Um, we all wish that we had labs just as much as you do. So um, we'll get through it somehow. Uh, we don't really have a, a plan beyond what I announced uh, not not that long ago. So I, I recently did a um, program announcement to everyone that I know April 6th would be our first available um, opportunity, if it will, um, to allow people to come back in uh, for labs. Um, but you know, you know, we're all watching the news every day, just like all of you are. Um, everything's uncertain at this point, so. Uh, the best we can do is just kind of keep going. Um, don't get behind in your classwork. Um, it could be very possible that this, you know, would be a large portion of your grade is what we're doing here online, you know. Um, so don't just kind of blow off all, all these assignments. So um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have supplies. Um, if there's anything I can do, uh, you know, to help you with your coursework, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I'm thinking about all of you and um, I hope you're doing well. See you soon. Bye.